It's hard to deny that open source AI has been a huge nexus of progress in the space, both in 2023 and specifically in the first few months of 2024. We saw incredible advancements from Meta and Mistral AI, both in the last year, and they've continued to deliver. And what's curious is, although Google fumbled the bag and, in some words, open-sourced the Transformers model, kicking off all of this incredible advancement, today they finally changed that by releasing their first open-source, highly capable model, which they're calling Gemma, which I assume is named this way because it sort of sounds like Gemini. And there are some really curious attributes here. A few are that it's a 7 billion parameter model meant to go toe-to-toe with Mistral and a number of other highly capable 7 billion parameter models. And the other thing is in many cases, this can actually beat Mistral 7B. And curiously, it even beats Mistral 7B with its 2 billion parameter model. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So basically, I want to go over why this model is impressive, how you can train it, what you can use it on right now, and why it's a really big deal that Google is finally open sourcing the work in competition with Meta and Mistral and basically anyone else who can publish stuff on Hugging Face. So how powerful is Gemma? So Gemma is, you know, they're calling it the most powerful open LLM yet. And obviously that is limited to its 7 billion parameter size. Let's get into what the actual specs of the model are. So it's open for commercial use, which is a pretty big deal. And in theory, it outperforms Mistral AI 7B and Llama 2 in human eval and MMLU. And it's important to note here that MMLU is actually a benchmark created by Google. So yes, it's accurate, but it has in the past sort of intended to favor Google model. It's the first open LLM based on Gemini and it comes in a few different versions. So it comes in two flavors, a 2 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model. Currently, it beats Mistral 7B, Desi LM 7B, which is sort of a math focused model, and Quen 1.5 7B. And what's curious is Google seems to have been really specific with choosing 2 billion and 7 billion parameter versions of this. As you know, with Quen 1.5, they actually released like 32 different versions, which gave a lot of insight, but there was a question of whether people could understand what was really useful. The instruct models are also available in 2 billion and 7 billion parameter variants. The default context window is 8,192 tokens, but as you mentioned before, tokens don't always scale linearly between different models. Its MMLU score is pretty impressive at 64.56, which in with an average leaderboard score of 63.75 for the 7 billion parameter. What's also really cool, and this is sort of Google's first move into making these models capable to run on mobile devices, is that their 2 billion parameter model is actually compatible with mobile phones. And I know this has already been ported to MLX, but it'll be curious to see how this starts to show up on Android at least for native inference. Right now, it's available on Hugging Face, Kaggle, and Vertex AI, and I want to get into a few more attributes of this. What's also really cool is this has already been fully ported to MLX and Llama C++. So right now you have full MLX support. Oni also has some pretty interesting insights here, which is basically stating that the vocab is much larger than other open source models like Mistral, having 250,000 words over 32,000 words. And we'll see if this helps with math code or other modalities. The other thing that's cool is uh, the, or- the RMS norm weight has a unit offset, which basically means you can do training optimization a bit differently relative to how you would with Mistral. Uh, George Dyrnov has also added this to Llama C++, which means you can run this locally in many, many different places, even on iOS. So this is kind of an early look into how it would run on mobile devices. I reviewed this app uh, earlier in 2024. The app honestly isn't that great, but it is cool that it lets you really quickly load up models to run on Apple Silicon in kind of a uh, hacker-ish way. So definitely check that out and check out the video. There'll be a card above. So this is the official release page. I'll link this below. What's curious is Google's taking an approach to telling people how to use this model and providing examples in a pretty different way. Meta generally favors researchers, and you can tell Google is trying to favor a larger audience with this. I think the idea here is to sort of parrot what Apple has done, where if you get a larger audience, generally you get greater gains and you get better insights to what people actually want without just overpaying product managers at Google to do. But as we know, with all that's been happening at Google, there probably aren't a lot of product managers left. And with all the pros, there are still cons. And I will say with Google models, A lot of the times their safety frameworks are highly restrictive, which is still going to give a lot of advantage to Mistral and Mixtral just because that's not really their core focus. And I think their 
core ethos of why they're making these models is a bit different. What's also really cool is clearly this was developed with TPUs in mind, since Jax and Keras 3 are ported right out of the box. Their benchmarks are pretty clear here. They've uh, gone through hella swag, there's AGI eval, and these are just the ones that I generally see, and obviously there are dozens of these now. But clearly, Gemma is within a clear margin of beating Mistral 7B in most cases, and Gemma 2B is in a lot of cases actually within 15% of these models as well. Now, I want to talk about what they mean by responsible AI development. I think if there are any product people still left at Google, this is probably what they're working on, inventing new words to basically wrap what they mean to be censorship. So they call this responsibly by design, basically saying that the data they curated was already tuned for safety and kind of muzzled. There is robust and transparent evaluation, which they're pretty much saying here is a comprehensive evaluation and transparent reporting for unveiling the model limitation. What they also call is responsible development, which, you know, the reason you see a lot of this in these more commercially focused models from bigger companies, um, especially with this one, since they're saying it's commercially free to use, is uh, this is just kind of risk management in a curious way. And then obviously this is fully intended to run on Google Cloud. I'm not a huge fan of Google Cloud, but they do have a ton of GPUs and a limited number of TPUs available. What I will say is the reason TPUs haven't taken off yet, as just as the hardware you run inference on and as hardware you deploy on, is even on Google Cloud, there are restricted things you can do with them. So for instance, if you want to train on self-driving car stuff or um, you know autonomous vehicle stuff, that is not allowed. Uh, and there's a list of like 20 other areas where they explicitly will not allow you to use TPUs. And the provisioning of TPUs is always kind of at Google's behest. So if they need a bunch of them, you can even have dedicated instances that in certain cases can be paused so that they can use them. So just a curious aside with TPUs uh, for Google Cloud. So also interesting is they're clearly pushing this into academia, hoping that that also kicks off more development with their platform. I think this is a curious take, but in my opinion, the big benefit of actually open sourcing these, and Meta I think has more of this ethos, is that having people who aren't academics or people who just want to try this out, even just software engineers who want to try this out, I think is a better approach to get more hands on deck when it comes to using this stuff and specifically open source models from larger companies. And yeah, so pretty cool model. I've messed around with it a bit. It's definitely not as open as Mistral AI 7B. All right, so there we go. You have to acknowledge this license. So this is released as a safe tensors model, which is kind of interesting. And there's actually an active demo right here. So they say, obviously it's coming from Google. They still make the same links from their initial page. Cool is they give you multi and single GPU examples right off the bat. What's curious is you know, in certain cases, they seem to be really focusing on a wider net of people. And in others, it looks like they're really primarily looking for um, kind of academics to work with this. But it's pretty interesting. I've downloaded two of these. Um, they're pretty easy to fine tune with the 4090s that I have. And let me see what we can do here. So they give us one of their inference endpoints. And let's see what one of their examples do. So basically, this is kind of a text generation completion feature that Google has showed us before. I think it's kind of interesting. Let me see if I can get this demo to do something else. And if you guys really want me to do uh, a full demo, please let me know in the comments below. So let me give it a few questions. I will say the demos right now are pretty limited. I might just throw one up actually as well. So let me see here. Um, okay, so that's kind of interesting. Gave me a dollar amount for two oranges. So clearly this is a pretty rough model. I think they might want to tell people this is really intended as a base model. It's not really meant to be instructed just yet. So I'm probably gonna do a follow-up for this, but very interesting. I think I'm probably still going to favor Mistral just because of their approach. I kind of resonate with more and hopefully we'll see some really cool fine tunes. I'm gonna be fine tuning this this weekend. Um, so let me know if you guys are going to be doing the same. So yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments about this model and about Google finally open sourcing something relative to Gemini 1.5. I hope you've learned something as always. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. It helps us out a ton. So we'll see you in the next one.